Welcome to an episode of Three Dudes of Horror. I'm Wormboy, the tech guy. I'm Toots. And I'm Damien. That's my real name. All right. So welcome to our podcast. This is our first official podcast. So if we're a bit uh, all over the place, I apologize. Uh, this is our first time we're actually kind of delving into this. Uh, so one, one thing you have to know is that we're real big fans of horror. We've been watching it all our lives. Uh, so we just kind of uh, just want to have, I guess, a normal conversation. We also want to know what you guys think. Uh, you know, uh, for instance, today we're going to be talking about the different subgenre of horror. Uh, you know, different uh, types of horror like slasher, supernatural, psychological, that sort of thing. Uh, so we're just going to give our two cents on which movies we like, we don't like. Um, and we also want to know what you guys think. If we haven't, uh, if we don't mention a title, you can mention it to us in the comments. Uh, so. All right, so let's get started. So, so we're talking about the subgenre of horror. So, I guess the first one we, we can talk about this one that we really kind of grew up with is the slasher genre. <laughs> this is the one that's kind of near and dear to our hearts. <laughs> and this is the one that I think everybody likes, even the casual horror fans. Like when they think of horror, they usually think of like slasher films. Yeah, and of course, and of course, the stuff that we grew up with. Have been stuff like Friday the Thirteenth, uh, Nightmare on Elm Street. Uh, although you can kind of fit that one in into like supernatural and psychological, but it is it is to an extent considered slasher. You know, Halloween, the Halloween movies. I think Nightmare on Elm Street is. I think it's still considered slasher more than any other genre because it follows like that slasher formula. There's it, there's. There's like the killer with the some form of like a knife, or and then there's like the the group of hapless teenagers that are trying to combat this, you know, the slasher villain, you know. It it does it does the the one thing it kind of doesn't follow it doesn't follow in terms of like the traditional slasher films like Halloween and. And Friday the Thirteenth is is that, from what I remember, the Nightmare on Elm Street movies, there wasn't a lot of sex in them, so it wasn't like you know, and there there was a couple, maybe one or two movies that had like drug use in it, you know, something like that. Uh, but in terms of like the you know, oh the teenagers are gonna go have sex and then they're gonna get killed, I think, and I think that's what makes Freddy more of a threat is the fact that. I think the kids are too scared shitless to do anything. <laughs> yeah, and there are, and it's true there are way more supernatural elements in the uh, Nightmare on Elm Street franchise than there are in the other slasher. So yeah, but in, like when when I think of Nightmare on Elm Street, I'm gonna think slasher. Oh yeah, so I mean, genre. so so do I. Like I'm saying, you can still kind of fit. You know that's those that series of movies into like the other subgenre, but I think, uh, but I think slasher is primarily the, you know, the the subgenre that's gonna fit into, and uh, I mean there are a couple of supernatural elements in in the Jason movies, especially like towards the latter part, where he doesn't die and he comes back, teleports, he teleports, teleports. like in part eight. And then uh, there's part seven where the uh, the telekinetic girl yeah that can actually like she's actually a legitimate threat and challenge to Jason yeah so because I think I mean I'm, I'm trying to think because I remember up to part four I guess he could say he was he was supernatural but he wasn't he kept coming back. And then, but it wasn't especially until after part five, which I, I thought was one of the weakest of the series, other than Jason X, and don't get me started with that just yet. Uh, <laughs> yeah. He's a crap. Uh, yeah, yeah, we'll, no, we'll, we'll, we'll get to an episode on that. Yeah, that, <laughs> that, that one jumps into a different genre altogether. Yeah, we're going we're gonna to talk about that Was, uh, was genre. part five the one where it turned out that it wasn't even Jason as the killer. 
It was it was uh, the one where all the kids are in the children's home. Yeah, it was the paramedic. And it's the paramedic. It's mm-hmm. not even Jason. Okay, yeah. I wanted to make sure we were talking about the same uh, the same volume of Friday the Thirteenth. Yeah, yeah, that one. That's. That's that's kind of like the weakest link in the Friday the Thirteenth chain, in my other, opinion. Other than Jason X. <laughs> other than Jason X. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's just, uh, um, but don't worry. We'll we'll dedicate uh, at one point. We will dedicate an episode to just either awesomely bad or just horrifically bad yeah. uh, horror Sh- movies. Shitty horror movies. Uh, oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. And that's where Jason X will come that's, back into the podcast that's where it lives not in crystal <laughs> right, lake but right. put in that episode though actually there's one franchise that came to mind right now when mm-hmm. while we're talking about slasher we can just get it in there real quick mm-hmm. because this was more like and I, it's the i wanted to t- i wanted to mention the scream franchise oh yeah because that one was to me it seems like on its own Standalone, it's a slasher franchise with a with its own killer, the Ghostface Killer. Yeah, but at the same time, it was also kind of like tongue in cheek, poking fun at the slasher genre. Yeah, it also it could it could fit into like comedy horror. Yeah, right. Uh, but yeah, you can we can consider that one slasher. Uh, another one we haven't mentioned. Uh, is Halloween, Halloween? That one's the one that pretty much started the whole thing. Right. Uh, That's the Halloween is generally considered. I've heard several sources call it the Godfather of the slasher genre, mm-hmm. <laughs> which it's it's hard to argue with that. Yeah, because it it did come out. It did come out before Friday the Thirteenth, and. Uh, and that's another and that's another example of where at some point especially at the beginning Michael Myers was I was going to say Mike Myers like nope uh Michael Myers <laughs> <laughs> was uh you know was an actual human and then at some point I believe around I I want to say like part or even part 2 like he started getting kind of you know almost superhuman strength like walking through a glass door right yeah well, I, I either saw or read an interview with John Carpenter that when he created the character that he's supposed to be like, he's not supposed to be human in a sense. He's supposed to be like just evil personified. And yeah. That's why he referred to him as the shape mm-hmm. to, to dehumanize him. That it's just, he's evil personified, just nonstop, you know, you, you cannot stop. No matter what, and it's but it's true in the early in the early films in that franchise. It's it's left really vague, like they never give you any like concrete like clues or hints that he's supernatural. Yeah, but it's just you know he gets shot, he gets stabbed, he falls off a two-story balcony and nothing stops him so yeah because i remember in part two uh in the hospital where he gets shot in the face twice in the eyes (laughs) and his whole big dilemma is he oh he just can't see them anymore and he's just kind of swinging around (laughs) Uh, perfect example yeah and so yeah i could see i could see that i can i can imagine that john carpenter mentioned that you know well he was supposed to be evil personified and it didn't really at least from what I remember, because it's been a while since I've seen the movies, um, or at least at least the Carpenter ones that that uh, you know that it comes to the point where you know he, he like everybody just thought he was just a mental patient and that was about it, you know. And I guess I could kind of see the little hints where he's supposed to be evil personified, and I think the only I think the only person that really caught on that was uh, Doctor Loomis. Right, because in virtually every movie, Donald Pleasance was just like, "We have to kill Michael Myers." Yeah, <laughs> uh, he's, he's he's desperately trying to explain to all the other characters in any given film in the franchise that Michael Myers is just this unstoppable like freight train force of evil. Yeah, and it's kind of like he's always on his own. Like nobody really 
buys how bad, how evil Michael is until it's too late. <laughs> yeah, and and his for the most part, from from what I can remember, throughout the series, uh, or at least you know, like I said, the Carpenter slash, you know, like the, you know, any anything pre Rob Zombie, um, you know, he was pretty much the one like either trying to stop him, and or you know trying to convince other people, no, he's just, you know he's evil personified. Uh, now. Dr. Loomis in the Rob Zombie movies, yeah, that's where he does he, he does kind of do that in the first one, where he is trying to explain that, like, there's no way I can help him, you know, unless, I mean, you can probably correct me on this, because, like I said, I think the last time I saw the first Rob Zombie one, it was, I want to say it was sometime after it came out in theaters. Uh, well, but in the Rob Zombie Halloween universe Rob Zombie did want to make it very clear that in in his version of Halloween Michael Myers is very much human Mm -hmm. like when when he takes a bullet wound when he takes any kind of uh, like any kind of wound or any kind of damage any kind of strike like it hurts him he grunts it slows him down like he wanted to he wanted to stress like very much that in his version like Michael's actually very much human like flesh and blood yeah and 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 like I'm, I'm for as as for part two because I've seen part two but I only saw it one time and that was at the theaters you know when I saw the Rob Zombie Halloween 2 and I thought it was okay it wasn't I didn't think it was as good as his first his part one um I mean, I remember it was a lot darker, and the other, the only other thing I can remember is that Doctor Loomis kind of sold out, and he was, you know, trying to get right. him, like he got a book deal and stuff like that. And I think at one point Weird Al came out. <laughs> I think that's the one thing I remember. And like you said earlier, he uh, Weird Al makes a joke on a talk show that are we talking about Mike Myers, the Austin Powers actor, or are we talking <laughs> about Michael Myers? <laughs> Like, that was Weird Al's little cameo in that movie. Yeah. Because I'm sure many, many people, like, that were very casual fans of horror were confused about that also. Mm -hmm. So they kind of just, like, threw that out there, like, tongue-in-cheek to the audience. Yeah. Using Weird Al. Yeah. Which is perfect. All right. So I guess uh, we're going to go ahead and move on to another uh, subgenre. Let's see. I guess we can tackle, let's see, what's a good one? I guess maybe like supernatural. I guess maybe supernatural. Uh, so what do you what do you think of when when you think of like oh supernatural horror? Supernatural horror. Yeah. Wow. Like many. Movie, I guess the Hellraiser movies would that qualify? Mm. Or was that more slasher? Because a lot of the a lot of the franchise and within horror they kind of like. They would qualify yes. as three, four genres. Yes. Like, there's definitely supernatural elements to I'll, the Hellraiser movies. I don't know. I mean, I get. I don't know. I don't know. I don't think I would consider it slasher. I would say it would probably is supernatural because it has to deal with the Cenobites that are, you know are potentially. Well, I mean, they say they're demons, right? You know, depending on who opens the the puzzle box, right. or they could be, or they could be angels, right? You know, it's so it's like, all depending on which. Uh, which realm or which plane of existence they come into like like the beings in this in this plane of existence see us as demons and the, that's the way I always took that yeah because I think even in the first one he uh, Pinhead mentions that right that is like you know well, demons was, yeah. to some angels to others that's know? the one with the big quote like yeah and uh like supernatural uh Actually, one of the one of the series that I like. Well, it's two. Well, I would say two and a half because I'm not I'm not really counting. Uh, what's that? Damn, I can't remember the title of that one. It's uh no, no don't stop it. Uh, it's uh Annabelle. Yeah, it's probably the Conjuring movies. Uh, I would I consider like the Conjuring like supernatural horror, you know. Yeah, it, that's yeah supernatural. supernatural. Uh, paranormal Activity, the Paranormal Activity movies. Although I did kind of lose track of it like around part four, 
I want to say it's probably about part four. Uh, the Exorcist, for sure. That's another supernatural. That's a big one. Yeah. I, I hate that one, man. That not because it sucks, but it's fucking. That's the movie that scares me the most. Yeah, I think I think out of all of them, Exorcist, and it's probably cliche now. It's gonna be cliche for sure now. Where oh, The Exorcist is the scariest movie ever. Which, like, it depends on who you ask. Some people consider it the scariest. Some people don't. But I, I mean, thought it was frightening. I thought it was very frightening. The Exorcist is kind of like. Like, I can use, the, to, to explain this, I can use the example of my dad, who is not, my dad is not by any means, like, a diehard horror fan, mm-hmm. but he loves that movie. Like, The Exorcist <laughs> is, like, good as an actual, like, an actual drama with with a big moral message, you know, like, mm-hmm. like how one man is able to defeat Satan himself at the end of the movie, you know, not, not an archangel, not God, it's just a man. Yeah. Who's able to defeat, you know, who's able to withstand the temptation once the devil's, in, like, possessing him, you know? I think I think it had a powerful message, I don't know. Yeah, like, uh, it, it's one of those movies where, you know, if it's on TV, I would have to be hard-pressed to watch it. Because, to me, it is so frightening. And it didn't help that I saw it when I was a kid on VHS, so that didn't, that didn't really help. And I remember seeing I, I remember seeing part two and three. I barely remember part two because uh, I, I mean I would always hear that one sucked and whatnot. I honestly don't remember it. I only I found it a bit confusing. But mind you, I was a kid when I saw it, and this was back when VHS were very popular. Yeah, I would have like the sequels. I would have to watch like the first one. I own it, Blu-ray, special edition, all that good stuff. Like. The sequels I would have to watch again, but I mean the the original Exorcist. I mean that movie has just become like that's one of those ones that actually like transcends horror. Like most people have seen that movie and know that movie, and actually the the house at Georgetown University where they filmed that mm-hmm. movie. Yeah. Like, after they filmed that movie, the owners of that house had so much trouble selling the house that they actually had to have the entire wing of the of the house where Reagan's room was torn out of the house. Because nobody would move in there after that movie came out because that's how much it actually terrified people. Like, it was crazy. Because I remember, I remember I also heard that the guy that played the director in the movie when they were making like he died like right after that scene was was shot or something like that yeah and there were a lot actually on the set there were a lot of mysterious deaths like the night watchman that that watched the set at night like he mysteriously died that was there was just there was a lot of creepy stuff going on with that movie like that movie we could do an entire podcast just on that movie i think yeah yeah <laughs> uh and uh, you know, but like I said, the con- you know the Conjuring movies, which I find fascinating, uh, because I mean they're allegedly based on true stories, but I also kind of like the fact that if it was a true story, like it's very interesting. And I'm and I know that some of it was dramatized, you know, and uh, you know, kind of glorified, you know, for the movies. Yeah. yeah, chewed up and spit up by the Hollywood machine. Uh, yeah. But they're really good movies. Though. I, I like, like them. It's James Wan we're talking about. Yeah. Like, that guy's one of the best horror <laughs> directors around right now, in my opinion, I think. Yeah, and and, and Annabelle, I thought it was okay. Uh, I'm, I'm terrified of that one. You're terrified of that? Because <laughs> I'm, well, I'm terrified of dolls in general. Like, anything with dolls yeah, fucking terrifies me. Look, well, I mean, the Annabelle doll, it's kind of like, who in their right mind would buy that doll and then have it in a room with their newborn baby? I'll <laughs> say I'll say this, though. If if I were, if I would, if I would have to buy that doll, in real, it would have to be for some sort of prank or a bet. <laughs> I would have to be either winning or losing money <laughs> or ha- or just, you know, taking the joy of scaring the shit out of somebody. To have that doll in my house, you know, temporarily, you know, but uh, but other than that, I wouldn't, I wouldn't buy it, especially at a garage sale, yeah. You know? um, 
so yeah, so there. I mean, I mean, there's a. Well, while we're talking about supernatural mm-hmm. horror movies, I wanted to. I don't know. I want to just throw this out there because this has been like a favorite of mine, and it's kind of like an underrated. I I think it's somewhat like an underrated franchise is Candyman. I like Candyman. Yeah. But that that's that qualifies under the supernatural franchise. Yeah, I would say so. It's not it's not slasher. It's in essence he's an he's an urban legend. Right. You know, so you could say that's supernatural. You know, he's not necessarily a mon he's more of a ghost than anything. He's right. not he's not a monster per se. Um <laughs> You know, but uh, I'm trying to think of other examples of because there's so many of uh, you know, and pretty pretty much all the sub genre have so many examples, and some of those examples could also be intertwined with other sub genre. Well, well, one movie that I think is in qualifies as in the supernatural franchise was that actually scares me. I've I've never actually seen the original Japanese version, but uh-huh. The Grudge. Oh, The Grudge, yeah. The original Grudge. The Grudge. The Ring. The you know, Ring. Like the Ring movies. But the Grudge in particular, when I f- saw that the first time, it it scared me. Like, it actually, like, it was it was chilly. Yeah. It, I mean, I, I, the only thing I remember from, that's the one with Sarah Michelle Gellar, right? Yeah. Yeah. I just remember that scene at the beginning with that girl, like, with the tongue and all that, like that. Like that. Yes. That's really the only thing I remember. I honestly think that it's just the way that the ghosts appeared in the movie, mm-hmm. and and just the overall, uh, the overall like ambiance, the, the overall like mood of that movie was just chilling. Like, like I don't know. It, it, and I still don't own it, but I'm gonna put it in my collection. But if we're talking about supernatural horror movies, I just had to mention that one real quick. Yeah. Uh, but another so uh, going to another genre this one this one's a popular one I don't know how popular it is I guess it kind of is because of the walking dead but zombie movies oh yeah oh yeah <laughs> calm, that, calm. that gets me all wet yeah calm down worm boy we just yeah. got worm boys I love, I love I love zombies I mean you, you name it I, I used to play video games with zombies I still play video games that Involves zombies and I love the movies and yeah. The Walking Dead, of course. If you if you want, I can get you a towel and a cigarette later. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Uh, but yeah, zombie movies. Uh, you know the ever classic Night of the Living Dead. Got to talk about George Romero. Yeah, George Romero. As just he's the the king of the zombies. And I'm sure there's so many you know podcasts, so many TV shows, whatnot, other media. Uh, talk about George Romero, but uh, but this is our podcast, so we're going to give our two cents, you know. <laughs> uh, so, you know, Night of the Living Dead, the original Night of the Living Dead, uh, which I, I'm, I'm also a fan of the remake, the Tom Savini remake. I thought that was very well done. Uh, it's creepy. It is creepy, yes. It is very creepy. Which, by the way, stars Candyman, Tony Todd. Yeah, Tony Todd, yeah. I just yeah. have to throw that out there. <laughs> yeah. Like, gotta mention that. Like, <laughs> and uh, you know the original Dawn of the Dead, Day of the Dead, um, and well, George Romero. Honestly, I, I have to. It, it might be a guilty pleasure. I don't know. Like, I might, I might, like, I might take some shit here, but I really liked Land of the Dead. Uh, I didn't mind Land I liked of the it. Dead. I liked it. I did. I'm not going to I hate that movie. <laughs> I I didn't I didn't mind Land of the Dead. Uh, we've got our first um, debate here. Yeah, and and what what didn't you like about it? Warm boy. Everything was shitty. <laughs> Everything was shitty. Okay. That's one way to put it. All right. Um I mean, I, I prefer like the the 28 days later, Zombie Land. But those, but twenty eight days later, I mean, good. they can they can fall under a zombie movie. But twenty days later, they're still alive. So that's it's more of a of a epidemic or inf- like infection or what's a good term for it? Epidemic. Uh, uh, I, infection is pretty. I would say an outbreak. Movie. Outbreak, yeah. It's more of an outbreak movie. I mean, well, you know, zombie. Where they're not actually. Uh, they're not. Re- dead. They're not reanimated dead. 
corpses. They're, yeah. They're, they're still alive. They're just infected with a virus from monkeys. So, so you can you can debate you can debate that you can consider you can consider them zombie movies because they're not under their own free will anymore, but at the same time they're not traditional zombies, you know, or Hollywood zombies where that they're dead and they're and they're reanimated. You know, um, but you could always say that's more of a like a you know like a contagion or infection you know infection. Right, it's more of an outbreak yeah. contagion yeah. type of movie. Yeah, and um, very intense though. Yeah, it <laughs> is. Very it intense is. movies. Uh, for the Romero ones, I do love the original uh, remakes. I mean remakes. Pff, uh, the original Romero movies. Uh, I did enjoy the remake of Dawn of the Dead. The uh, I like the that Zack one. Snyder. I I didn't mind that one. I like that one uh, because it it really was trying to do its own thing. You know. Yeah, that Dawn of the Dead, the remake, the Zack Snyder remake, that became like one of my, that was one of those movies when I was in college that mm -hmm. when I bought the DVD, that's the only movie I watched for like a month. Yeah, I would watch that all the time. <laughs> watch that movie all the time. The only, the only gripe I had, the only gripe I had, and, and it's not a, you know, there's, there's flaws in the movie, but the one flaw that just kind of stuck out to me was the fact that even after about a month because if you look at the if you look at the uh the special features on the dvd where where it's talking about the guy the andy like at the ammo yeah, at yeah. The ammo shop. I, I, I remember i saw yeah. it yeah and then like and, and if you count the days you can more or less calculate that they were there for about a month maybe like 28 days right you know so you'd think the zombies from the beginning portion of that of that you know, zombie virus spread, you know, you would think that they would have been, that they would have been, you know, decayed enough that they couldn't run that fast. Completely, de like just walking skeletons at that point. Yeah, or at least, or at least enough that you know they're not going to run that fast. Right. You know, like the, the fresher ones would, you know. Uh, so that was my, one of, you know, my biggest gripe, you know, with that, you know, I was, it, you could call it a nitpick or whatever, I don't care. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> And uh, let's see, I I love the remake of Night Living Dead. Like I said, the Tom Savini one, I thought that was very well done. Uh, it's the, it was essentially kind of a reimagining of the original without changing too many elements. And uh, with, with George Romero remakes, I I'm not sure if it's a zombie movie, mm -hmm. but I I loved the remake of The Crazies. I haven't seen that one. That's I actually the, haven't the, seen that one. That's a really good remake. Like, I don't even remember the original Crazies that George Romero did, but that one, that one that's kind of another one, like what we were mentioning earlier with the 28 Days Later, where it's just kind of living people infected with, a, with some sort of virus or bacteria, something that mm -hmm. gets in the water in this small town and makes everybody, like, just crazy lunatics, like out to kill but they're not zombies they still talk they but the the remake was really good like like the production value the acting the story everything about that movie was just and it had like that it had like that that tone with that with the whole background of like you know the the evil government, you know, that's trying to cover up the. Oh, okay. Like they're trying to cover up like the incident and things right. like that. Oh, okay. And where the the people are helpless because you know they're being quarantined and they're trying to find a way out and it's just that kind of vibe in movies mm -hmm. that makes it really interesting to me. Like it, it to the point I guess where it could almost qualify as like a psychological thriller. Yeah, and uh, but yeah, like uh, let's see, uh, like I said, I was I was a I was a fan of those Romero movies. I didn't I didn't like the uh, remake of Day of the Dead, uh, the one with Mina Savari and Ving Rhames. I haven't seen it. Yeah, uh, 
As, as soon as I saw Ving Rhymes, I thought it was like a part two of the Zack Snyder Dawn of the Dead. That's what I was thinking, and I think that was kind of what they were going for. But that was all that. That was on, that was the only appeal that that movie had to me. I was like, is it? Are they gonna like remake all of Romero's zombie movies? But then I found out like from somebody who had already seen the movie, like, no, it's not a sequel. Like, he's not. Ving Rhymes isn't playing the same character that he did. Nah, he's he wasn't the he wasn't Kenneth like the cop. He right. was a. Uh, he was, I think he was Captain Rhodes in that one. So then I was just kind of like, eh, I'm not interested. I never saw it. Yeah. Uh, it, but yeah, there were so many things wrong with that movie. Uh, you know, like they had the zombies not only running, but they were climbing. And then, you know, I think the characters were, because it was a remake, they were using, you know, the uh, the original names, you know, like Salazar and Dr. Logan and things like that. But they really weren't those characters. Like you could say it's a reimagining, and it was, but they just didn't do a very good job. As to the point to, where it was almost a completely different movie with just characters that had the same name. Yeah, and I think, I think what it was, and it's been, and I think the last time I saw that movie, you know, video stores were still open, <laughs> with DVDs at least. Um, the good old days. Yeah, the good old days, like before <laughs> Blu-ray, it was just DVDs, and uh, but I remember, you know, you you didn't know the characters well enough, at least. At least in Dawn of the Dead, at least in the remake of Dawn of the Dead, you got to at least kind of hang out with the characters at least to kind of... The characters were flushed out. Yeah, I mean, there were a few that were one-dimensional, that you didn't really know them and whatnot, but then but then there were the main characters where you kind of got to kind of know and love a, little, a bit. And uh, but, with the, but with Day of the Dead, I really didn't get attached to any other characters. Well, like I said, I, I didn't even see the movie, so... I liked, I liked Ving Rhames in it. I liked Ving Rhames. There's something I have to say. Yeah. There's... I don't know. I don't want it to take up too much time. Because nah, we, need to, we need to get to other genres. No, nah, that's fine. It's fine. In the Zack Snyder Dawn of the Dead remake, mm-hmm. I, I fucking loved that Steve character. That just... That, <laughs> yeah. that cynical bastard that, like... <laughs> it was just a total prick. But since it's a movie, you can like the guy. <laughs> like yeah, uh, if I ever meet, if I ever meet, uh, I'm blanking out on his name. He's the, the one that comes out of Modern Family. Yeah, uh, um, uh, Ty Burrell. Ty Burrell. Yeah. If I ever, if I ever meet him, I do. I loved you in in Dawn of the yeah. Dead. <laughs> I used to quote that character all the time. Like I would use his quotes, and I'm trying to think of some of them, but like. Just like the the scene where they're they're uh, just having fun up on the roof with the sniper, mm-hmm. and they're just telling the sniper with the eraser boards like, "Oh, like, kill Burt Reynolds," and it's yeah. just hilarious. Like, yeah, it's just like, and and then of course he's the one that's like the most into it, the just like heartless like. Oh yeah, he was the one that was just like whatever you know. It's my it's my boat. <laughs> yeah, and. Uh, Let's see. I there was another Day of the Dead two called Contagion. Day of the Dead two Contagion. That was a piece of shit. That was. <laughs> see, I know this is a piece of shit because I didn't even know that movie existed until no, it's, right now. <laughs> it's one of those. It's almost the equivalent of like when there's something you're drinking or eating and it tastes horrible, and you kind of almost don't believe it. You want someone else to try it just to see how bad it is. <laughs> That's almost kind of with this movie, like, just like fucking House of the Dead. Oh, my God. That's, I, I remember I was trying to watch that movie drunk with a friend of mine. We couldn't even make it all the way through. Like, we actually had to take breaks. That's how bad that movie was. Yeah, we, and we can get more into that one on, a, on another yeah. Oh, podcast. Yeah. The, Along with Jason Hex. The, well, but I was going to say in the genre of video games made into oh, yeah. movies. Oh, yeah. We can, House we can of do the an Dead. episode of that. Yeah. I haven't attempted to ever watch House of the Dead, but I've heard from many different people that they tried to force themselves to watch it and... They had to try at least four or five times because they kept falling asleep, or they would just get so frustrated they would literally have to turn the movie off because it's that bad. Yeah, and it wasn't, and even, and it wasn't even like a entertainingly bad. It wasn't like, like watching, 
you know, a clown car get into a car accident with like a chicken truck. It was just like it's not awesomely it just, bad where it's fun to watch it. It's just bad. It's psychological <laughs> torture. That's what it is. Yeah, it's bad where it's depressing. Yeah, and uh, and uh, another one, another one that I I love in this in this subgenre is uh, Shaun of the Dead. Oh, that one, that one's great. I wanted to bring it up, but I I wanted to bring it up, but I was gonna wait until we got to comedy. Oh yeah, I mean we can we can go into that. that Shaun one of the Dead is like <clears throat> the. I could talk for days about that movie. The quotes, the characters, the scenes that are funny, just mm-hmm. the directing. Oh, that movie's just great. I'm, I get, I just, I get, I don't know what to say. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, and uh, I, yeah, like I think what I really liked about the writing is just that you, I, I love the characters. You know, even even. Uh, well, you know, you know what I can say about it. Mm. The first time I watched Shaun of the Dead, I honestly didn't think it was that good. Like, I watched it, and I just was sort of like, you know, it's the typical, like, dry British humor. Mm -hmm. When I watched it the second time, and then the third time, and you start noticing all the little things that you didn't pick up on the first time. Yeah. Like how when he walks to the store... The day, you know, before the zombie outbreak, and then he walks to the yeah, store it's pretty after, like a parallel, and it's it? a parallel. It, everything happens the same way, except everybody's zombies now. Yeah, and I didn't pick that up. And there's countless things in that movie that are like that. That it's the the little things you pick up, like the up on the second viewing. Mm-hmm. And then I was just like, this movie is genius. I love it. And then I watched it. It was another one of those that I watched in college like 50 times. Like, yeah, like I I I picked up on on most of that. I picked up on most of that. That's why when I watched it at the at the movies, like I, I fell in love with it. And I also and I also caught the majority of like the old zombie references, you know, like we're coming to get you, Barbara. Right. And and, and the music from uh, Goblin. Uh, from Dario Argento and Goblin, right. you know, like from the original Dawn of the Dead. Like I was catching all those. And the ending credits, they played the original Dawn of the Dead music, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And like Shaun the, of the Dead. Yeah, da, 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 right. da, da, da. yeah. And I wasn't gonna do it, but the, yeah, <laughs> I'm not doing it justice. And, like, and I, I love the character Ed. Oh yeah, Ed. Ed was Nick Frost was fantastic at him. And like, uh, I got in trouble when I used to work at Chili's mm-hmm. because of Ed. <laughs> I actually well, watched. you you were a grown up, so you knew what you were doing. <laughs> No, I actually when we when we would get the winter Texans in, mm-hmm. I actually walked up. I would actually walk up the tables because I had already kind of established rapport with like our regulars, mm-hmm. and I actually walked up the tables and I actually said, "Can I get any of you cunts a drink?" <laughs> Anyone? And they thought it was hilarious. But just one time, I was unlucky, and my assistant manager was standing right behind me. Oh, okay. So yeah. Like so, thanks to Shaun of the Dead, I, that was one of the times I lost my job. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, there's also just really, really, really quick to kind of get the the Romero because uh, there are a couple of movies left. We have the Diary of the Dead. I mentioned Land of the Dead, but there's Diary of the Dead, which is okay. That one's okay. Uh, I remember back in 2005, I did write part of a script. That kind of resembled Diary of the Dead. You had mentioned this, that before. Yeah, yeah, and, and but it was more like a and we we were film and, and I wanted to film it like in the bookstore that we were working at, and uh, <laughs> you know, and it was supposed to be more of like a comedy horror kind of thing, and uh, you know, where it's just like, and I wanted to change some of the rules, like we shoot them in the head, it doesn't do anything, and you're like, oh shit. You know, uh, and I would have had a, a lot of zombie fans come after me. And, uh, you could have had a good one-liner in the movie, like "This is new." Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and and I want to I want to see if I can dig up, you know, no pun intended, like the uh, the uh, script. I don't, I don't know where it is. It's probably like in an old computer that's no longer working. I'm dying to see it. If you find it, I will gladly read one of the characters. Yeah, and it's <laughs> and it's you know, of course, that was. Back in 2005, so a lot of stuff has changed since then. So I would have to really update it. And then the last one is Survival of the Dead, which... I was going to talk... Like, 
Survival of the Dead, my whole take on it is the movie itself, like I kind of understood what what the whole, because every George Romero movie, there's always some sort of, he's making a statement. Yeah, about, yeah. Uh, he's making a sociological statement or something. Uh, but I didn't really think the whole movie itself was very good. But the ending, where the, like, the, it's the first time that I personally have ever seen in a zombie movie where the zombies learn that mm-hmm. they don't have to only eat other living humans, where they just start, like, they just start ganging up on horses and they're just, like, eating a 5,000 pound horse. And I had. Maybe that exists in another zombie movie, but that was the first time I'd ever seen it. And I was just like, that's fucking, that's awesome. (laughs) Yeah, like, I mean, I don't condone horse eating, but uh, I guess as a zombie, don't care. It's a movie. Yeah, it's a movie. Um, I thought it was okay. Yeah, yeah, for the record, I would not think it was awesome if, like... If some bath salt zombies were actually eating a horse, yeah, like, we don't we don't condone no. animal cruelty of any kind. Yeah, just in the movies, just, yeah, just in the in the zombie movies where they're zombies, they can't help themselves. Yeah, <laughs> that was just uh, like okay, it has a really which I'd actually thought about before. I was like, why didn't why don't they attack animals? Yeah. And then when Romero actually did it at the end of Survival of the Dead, I was like, oh, okay, somebody else thought of it too. But actually, actually, in the remake of Night of Living Dead. Uh, they do kind of mention it briefly at the at the. I still remember like the radio. That's how that's how many times I've seen this movie. Uh, <laughs> that when Tony Todd, when Ben is in the cellar, and he's turning on that piece of shit radio, like the only thing that can like let him know what's going on, like towards the end of the movie. Right. And it and it does mention that they do attack warm blooded animals, including human beings. You know. So I mean, but like I said, this was a remake. It wasn't. It wasn't canon, I guess, like in terms of the Romero movies themselves. Um, so you, you can't talk about a you can't talk about a horror a horror genre of just juggernaut like George Romero without spending the entire podcast talking about it. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, uh, but but we mentioned Shaun of the Dead, and we can move on to I guess comedy horror. Yes. Yeah, comedy horror. I was waiting for that one. Yeah. Army of Darkness, baby. Army of Darkness. <laughs> like, Army of Darkness. Now we can talk about it. Yeah. Like, I've been waiting. I was like, come on, say, say comedy. Say comedy. <laughs> Army of Darkness. Yeah, hell yeah. This is my boomstick. Yeah. Yeah, that one, man. Uh... Totally ridiculous movie. Makes no sense. If you watch the director's cut or the European cut, because there's like a thousand cuts of that movie, it makes even less sense than the I'm theatrical sh- version that already made no sense. But it's fucking awesome. And I'm sure, and I'm and I'm sure we're like, and I know there's countless other people, but we're gonna get on their bandwagon that that uh, Bruce Campbell is just awesome. Yes, he is. Yeah, he is. <laughs> you know, and it's so weird seeing him from. You know, Evil Dead, where he's just a regular guy. Right. Then Evil Dead 2, where he gets his hand cut off, and then he has to have a a chainsaw and whatnot. And then Army of Darkness, where he's just this total badass. Yeah, he's just a smartass. Just, like... And I thought it was hilarious that in the past, they see him as, like, this you know, prophesized savior that's gonna save them from this dark evil. And he's just like a total jackass from yeah. the future. But in the past, they see him like as this just this hero that fell from the sky, and it's it's fucking hilarious, man. I'm, I just love that movie. Yeah, and uh, and, and and one of my favorite parts from the movie is when he's battling his evil self, uh, and then you see like the little miniature versions of him, and right, and he has to shoot himself in the face with yeah. a shotgun. And the movie is. So quotable, like just about anything Ash says from that movie is quotable. Even that scene, I'm bad, Ash. You're good, Ash. Yeah. (laughs) How many times have you said that to your to your friend? Like, I'm like anybody. Like, you're goody little two shoes. (laughs) No, I haven't. I haven't said that. I'm. I'm actually trying to think if I actually ever quoted that movie to somebody. 
Oh, I I'm have. sure I have. I'm sure I have at some point. I've probably done it and didn't even realize I was doing it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this 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 one's kind of like in the zombie. Well, actually, it is actually definitely in the zombie genre. But I want <laughs> I, if we're talking about horror comedy, I want to talk about Zombie Land. Oh yeah. I was I was really like pumped for a sequel. It seemed like they were gonna make a sequel. That's how much I liked that movie. Yeah, and and it would be great. It would be great to see those same characters. You know how yeah. they are today, because I think the first one came out what two thousand seven, two thousand eight, yeah, something like that. It's been a while. Um, but it would it would be great to see you know Woody Harrelson and and Emma Stone and everybody just kind of like okay how would. They, and it would be kind of funny if they actually kill off another celebrity. <laughs> right. Like Bill Murray coming out. Like, yeah. Which, Ghostbusters, that's another horror comedy. Yeah, Ghostbusters. Uh, Go- but Tallahassee was almost like... He was almost like a, a new Ash, in a, in mm-hmm. a way. Right? Yeah. Like, yeah. that character was just... I mean, all the characters were awesome. Like, Yeah. And, uh... Yeah, so so Zombie Land, like I said, it'll be great if they actually did a sequel, even if it's like ten years later or something like that, just to see what they were up to. Yeah, and because uh, it was just it was a genius concept, like the Jesse, what's his name, Eisenberg, I- Eisenberg? character, mm-hmm. like the the uptight, obsessive, compulsive character that's got all these rules and he actually like is so OCD that he writes them down in a little notepad. And then that character hooking up with and traveling across the country in the midst of the zombie apocalypse, like or in the wake of the zombie apocalypse, actually, mm-hmm. with a character like Tallahassee, like yeah. that was just like genius for comedy, like mm-hmm. these two opposites, like yeah. And uh, let's see, another. I guess you could consider this one zombie horror comedy, other than Shaun of the Dead's Reanimator. <sighs> Yeah, I like I like Reanimator. Uh, that I can't watch because my wife is a animal lover. <laughs> yeah, there's there's a scene regarding a cat that he's trying to bring back to life by this serum. Uh, if you guys haven't seen it, I would recommend it uh, on Net. I believe it's still on Netflix. That one's actually it is based on H.P. Lovecraft. Yeah, right? it is. Yeah. yeah, and it's been years since I read the the original story. Which that alone just gives it credit. Like it's gonna be good. Yeah, I Based remember on an H.P. Lovecraft story. And I remember, I remember the original story was just very, very dark and serious because it's H.P. Lovecraft, you know. But I liked how when they adapted it, you know, to the big screen, they made it more of like a comedy, you mm. know. Mm. Uh, especially with like the floating head and whatnot, and yeah, yeah <laughs> that's one that I need to watch again though. It's been a very long time. Mm-hmm. Uh. Let's see. I'm trying to think of other comedy horror. Um, let's see. Uh, I would mention Chud too, but I don't think anybody remembers that one. I barely <laughs> remember that one. Uh, there is there was a movie called Chud, uh, cannibalistic humanoid <laughs> underground dweller, that starred Daniel Stern oh, and, okay. and John Hurd. There's no way that can't be comedy. No, and the funny thing is the the first one. The first Chud movie wasn't really a comedy. It was, you know, uh, they they did play it pretty straight. And once they made Bud uh, Chud Two, Bud the Chud, that's actually the full title of it. <laughs> yeah, that's when they made it into a comedy. <laughs> just the title. I've never seen these movies, but just the I've titles. Seen, I've like, seen parts of that Chud has to two. be a comedy. I, I've seen, I remember I remember parts of Chud Two, oh. and that one. I mean, it has Robert Vaughn and. You know, and essentially they're like they're essentially almost like zombies, but they can talk. You know, but but they do play it very comedically. But I I still like Chud Two better than the. Than the I've cartoons. got I've got some homework. I'm gonna have to get on the fire stick and watch the Chud movies. Uh yeah. The, oh, there's one I can't believe I didn't think of this. Uh, which with this one is kind of like what we were saying earlier. The term we use, the Godfather of. It's like the Godfather of horror comedy, uh, American Werewolf in London. Oh yeah, I, I love that movie. Yeah, that's a great like, movie. Jonathan Landis, mm-hmm. another one that's really quotable. Yeah, I didn't mean to call you Meatloaf, Jack. Yeah, I, yeah, I really like the Griffin Dunn character, the one that, yeah. the friend that dies and, and he keeps showing just haunting up. him. Yeah, and every time he shows up, he's more and more decomposed. Yeah, 
And then all as as he starts like the first time he changes the David character. Yeah. And he goes on a killing spree that of course he doesn't remember because he's a werewolf. And then he starts getting haunted by all of his victims along with his friend who's trying to convince him to kill himself. It's like a really dark comedy. Yeah, it is. Now uh, we're gonna go ahead and talk about one more subgenre, and then I guess we'll continue on the next episode because there are, there are quite a few. Uh, I guess. Uh, I guess the one I guess the one that pops into my head is the sci-fi horror. So Alien, Alien Aliens, Predator. Predator. Uh, you know, especially and and the one it really kind of it kind of popped in my head because Bill Paxton recently died. Mm. Rest and, in peace. Yeah, and one of the and one of the roles that I really loved him in was Aliens. Mm. Yeah. You know? I mean, don't get me wrong. I loved him in, like, Twister and Frailty and all that. And we'll get into Frailty, like, next time. But Hudson. Uh, but, yeah. Another know. quotable character. Oh, yeah. He was just, like, that... He was just the typical <laughs> uh, Bill Paxton, the loose cannon. Like, the loose cannon character. But he was, like... He was, like, the... Wasn't he kind of, like, the computer expert in the movie? Like, he had a special skill that they needed him. I'm like trying, where I'm trying to remember. You know, he was the one that knew how to go through all the blueprints of the facility they were in, and they even mentioned it. They were like, "Dude, if you were like like Sigourney Weaver, Ripley, just, mm-hmm. like they say something along the lines of like, if we didn't need you, which we need you, like, but you're such a prick, yeah, like, like with a negative attitude. Like once once the once like most of the Space Marines get killed by the aliens, mm-hmm. or they get taken." Where they're, you know, they're going to get, like, harvested or whatever they do. Yeah. He's just, like, he just completely gives up. And he's just, like, shouting, like, fuck it, let's just quit. And then they're, like, if we didn't need you because of your, that special skill that he has. Yeah. They're, like, we would probably just, like, kill you. Because yeah, you're and, annoying the shit out of all of us. And the thing is, and the thing is, uh, but the way he acted, but the way Bill Paxton portrayed it, like, he did, like, he had charm to it. Yeah, because if I think if it would have been any other actor, uh, not that one can just pop in my head right now, but I think if it would have been any other actor, they would have been like, "Oh, this guy's annoying." Right. But the way, but the way he portrayed it, you know, made you like him. Yeah, where he was just like, "How do I get out of this chicken shit outfit?" You know, (laughs) it's just like you know, like he he was funny at the same time, so he was charming. He was annoying, but he was charming. Yeah. Yeah. And fucking do. And I guess. (laughs) And I guess if you want to go back to Supernatural, I was going to bring this up, uh, I guess, when we got into gothic horror, but speaking of Bill Paxton, you know, Near Dark, so he was a vampire. Oh, I love that movie. Yeah. Underrated vampire movie yeah, from the yeah. 80s. And I love I loved that whole bar scene where he's just like, finger licking good, you know. Yeah. Like, you, know uh, I had, you know, did you see the interview with him where he talked about he had like a really bad migraine? And he told the director, like, I, I can't, I, like, I can't even see, like, I'm seeing stars. Yeah. And they actually gave him, like, a B12 injection or something. So he's actually high in that scene. <laughs> like, and they just, like, it seemed like the director was just, like, just, just, just cut him loose. Like, just, just let Bill Paxton do his Bill Paxton thing. Yeah. Like, that, he just owns that whole scene. Oh, yeah. And then, like, he kills the bartender with a spur and. Yeah, you know, and, and yeah, to me it was one of those memorable scenes from the movie. And but yeah, like you said, very underrated, very and underrated had, vampire movie. He was real good at ad libbing too. Like when he when he when he kills the biker by like crushing his skull, like mm-hmm. he wasn't supposed to take the guy's sunglasses and put them on. Yeah, like that wasn't in the script. He just did that. Like he was so in character. Like it was yeah. just like that great like loose cannon in that little vampire group. And what I, I liked about Near Dark was that they kept a lot of the... Like the director said in an interview, like she wanted to specifically keep all the gothic elements out. Yeah. Which were typical in vampire movies, you know, like the the fangs, the stake through the heart. all Like it was almost like it was supposed to be like a western combined yeah, with a like vampire movie. Like they were there to survive, you know. Right. Uh, they weren't, you know, it wasn't like all these rules or anything. Yeah, sound like it still hurt them, but 
you know other than that they just kind of were just trying to make their way and feeding on people and they weren't like ridiculously wealthy like they were like a they were actually like poor you know they were, yeah it was like a like a poor traveling family of drifters yeah and they weren't and they weren't sparkling in the daylight so yeah <laughs> Oh, uh, we're, uh, we're not getting into that. Yeah, no. We're, we're not going to have to get into yeah, that. Yeah, no. <laughs> Fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> Don't we're worry. Into that. We'll have we'll have an episode of the, <laughs> yeah. the, you know, of the House of the Deads and the Twilights <laughs> and the, well, like the, what was it, the Day of the Dead 2 Contagion. Of Flight uh, of the Dead. Oh. <laughs> oh, and one another one that you have to watch, going back to zombies, uh, is fucking Children of the Living Dead. That one, oh my god that one another one could, that I knew existed like, yeah right now. you could like you could you could see when you see the bad guy you could see like it's just a mask and like he has rubber gloves on for hands oh, and the the irony is is that Tom Savini comes out in this and he dies within the first like five minutes of the movie you know, yeah. you think the the master special effects artist I don't think he did the special effects in this movie because if not, they would have been badass. <laughs> I think I think he was just there for like a like a cameo, and that's it. Yeah, what's with Tom Savini, who's a great, who's like another horror genre juggernaut, like Titan. Mm-hmm. He always makes these cameos at the beginning of like crappy horror movies. He did the cameo in the beginning of the Lost Boys sequel, The Tribe. I haven't seen that one. Well, yeah, he comes out as in a cameo at the very beginning and gets killed at the very beginning. It's almost that's like a, he's doing it as a joke, like tongue in cheek to the audience, but like that's a not, wink at the audience. But that's not to say he's not he's he's a he's a good actor. He is yeah, a good actor. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying. Like it, it seems like he's doing that as like a wink to the audience. Like, yeah, yeah. This movie sucks. So. I'm getting out of here early. Yeah. <laughs> My character's dying. So, in the, in yeah, the, so kill me off already. At the beginning of the first act. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so we're going to continue with different, uh, with other subgenre of horror. Uh, so I guess we can consider this part one. Uh, we'll go to part two next time. Uh, well, um, like I said, please like us on YouTube and subscribe to our channel, Three Dudes of Horror. <laughs> he, to- he totally didn't read that from a script. I promise you that. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so we'll, right. we'll see you guys next uh, episode. Right. All Thank right. you. Leave us comments. Tell us what we missed. What you wanted us to talk yeah, about. Yeah. There's yeah. If there's any movies that we didn't bring up, any franchises we didn't bring up, maybe some that we're not aware of. Right. Because right. there are some like underground ones and whatnot. We are open to a suggestion box. Yeah, and uh, you know, so go ahead. Like I said, leave us comments if there are criticisms, because this is our first time. Leave, constructive criticisms, I might add. Uh, no trolling. <laughs> no, I'm sure we're gonna get slammed by. Some oh trolls. yeah, we're gonna get. Yeah, that's it's <laughs> that's, the internet. Yeah, that's just part it's of the it. internet. Yeah, everybody has an opinion. It's the internet. Yeah. All right, so see you all next time. We're we're pretty we're over and out. So later later.